Jina langu ni Emmanuel Terer nipo eneo la Kasarani tunakoita Isipe. Hapa nimekuja ili nikufunze kuhusiana na kile tunaita nondo hariri. Hawa ni wanyama aina gani na wanatusaidia vipi hasa kuzingatia kwamba kule mbele si sote tunahitaji mavazi. Wewe utafahamu sana kuhusiana na hili usikwende popote. Tayari ninao wataalamu ambao wanafahamu sana swala hili la nondo hariri. Vipi? Kusalama sana, kusabisa, niko salama kabisa. Okay, so sawa. Tarehe leo nzuri. Naomba sana ujitambulishe kwa kuna mbeji na lako. Kisha vile vile umtambulishe daktari. Okay. Kwa majina naitwa Dr. Nelly Dungu na ninasimamia serikacha section na huyu anaitwa Dr. Subramanian Sevgan. Subramanian Sevgan ni yeye amesimamia hii eh, serikacha na environmental health program in Isipe. Okay. He's the head of the Serikacha so, and head of environmental health. Yes. So, so. Karibu sana kwa Serikacha. Na nitaacha Dr. Subi. Tunamuita Subi kwa kifupi akueleze kuhusu ulimaji wa silicon. Okay. Asante sana. Asante sana. Ashukuru kabisa. Uh, first of all, uh, welcome to Isipe. Uh, my name is uh, Subramanian Sevgan. I head the environment health team at Isipe where we look at insects in a different perspective. Uh, insects, when I say, people always feel that it is harmful, but uh, not always the insects are harmful. There are several insects that are useful to us in multiple ways of uh, providing livelihoods for us, providing food for us, and also providing value-added element uh, materials for us. So in that regard, uh, uh, we look at these insects, like for instance, sericultures, silkworms, bees, honeybees, and also insects that can go into uh, proteins for feeds. So we look at all these insects that are useful uh, and try to conserve the ecosystem around it in the environmental space. We try to conserve the ecosystem around it uh, uh, so that um, it's both, both a win-win for the environment, for the people and for the country as such. Yeah. Uh, I really want to know what we mean by sericulture. Yeah. Um, sericulture is actually the economic uh, business which you can venture into uh, for producing cloth using insects. So there are insects that uh, produces fibers which can be transformed into cloth. Uh, and farming those insects is what is called as uh, sericulture. Uh, as I said, uh, uh, there are many useful insects and uh, insects that can produce uh, fibers for our textiles. Uh, are also very useful. So sericulture is a kind of a, a, a economic activity where you produce insects that can uh, uh, produce uh, fibers when they uh, pupate. Uh, so in this space of uh, sericulture, there are several insects that can that are useful. One is the bombyx uh, mori uh, or the uh, bombyx silk, which is normally produced by feeding insects on uh, mulberry leaves. Uh, and uh, there are other species which contributes also to this, like for instance the airy silkworm, uh, which feeds on castor, uh, a dry land crop. Uh, and in, in Africa, uh, we are also uniquely endowed with many of these uh, uh, moths, uh, which pupates and produces fiber, right? For instance, these are called as wild silk, uh, species like Gonometa, Ostica, and others, uh, which normally you would have seen as hairy caterpillars on acacia. Uh, they also pupate with a lot of fiber and these fibers can also be used for uh, uh, textile making. And all this put together is uh, sericulture, uh, which can contribute to livelihoods for uh, women and youth or whoever wants to engage into this business. The, these insects normally, as, as any other insect, they have uh, four stages. Uh, uh, they have an egg stage from which very young uh, uh, caterpillars emerge out. Uh, and, and based on the species, they are either fed on uh, mulberry or they are fed on uh, uh, castor uh, and they grow out uh, through di six, six different stages. So insects has this tendency of as they grow out, they uh, shed their exoskeleton or the outer skin and they move into the next stage. So the larval stage, there are six stages and at the end of the sixth stage, uh, they go into a kind of a resting stage, which we call as the pupae. Uh, and this pupae, uh, the insect tries to protect the pupae with a fibrous coat around it which we call as a cocoon. And this cocoon is what provides us with the fiber for uh, the textiles. Um, so from the pupae, uh, adults emerge out and uh, they get into the cycle again as, uh, as eggs. I think uh, silk is the major product, uh, whether it is bombic silk or airy silk, that's a major product. But increasingly we are, we are seeing that there are opportunities to diversify 
the business. Uh, for instance, uh, once you extract the fiber out, the pupae that is there within the cocoon uh, is a waste product. But then this uh, cocoon is very rich in uh, proteins and fats. And the proteins can be uh, given to our uh, poultry uh, and the fat uh, uh, gives us oil. In fact, in uh, Asian countries like China, the silkworm pupae is actually a delicacy. People consume it as a food uh, uh, directly. Uh, so there are a lot of other things that we can also do, like for uh, any other livestock when they uh, consume on the, on the plants, they also uh, give out, uh, they poop out or they produce manure. In the same way, when you mass produce uh, silkworms, they also produce a lot of insect refuse. And this insect refuse can be good sources of organic manure for your uh, plants. Um, beyond this, uh, before we reel the uh, fiber, uh, there is a process where we extract the proteins out of the uh, cocoon. Uh, that is, sericin is extracted out from some of these insects. And this sericin can be uh, isolated and it's a pharm pharmaceutical product which can be developed. So we are now looking at diversifying more beyond the, the silk uh, itself into other uh, value-added products. And there is another source of completely different source of uh, value-added products that you can also generate from this business. For instance, mulberry. The mulberry uh, has some uh, very tasty fruits. Uh, the fruits can be consumed directly or it can be used for winemaking. Uh, in the same way, uh, castor, the seeds are good sources of oil and these oils can also be used for various purposes, whether it is pharmaceutical purpose or even for energy needs, you can use these oils. Yeah. Silkworms, uh, according to the species, they uh, pupate in different uh, ways. Like for instance, a bombyx uh, silkworm, uh, the cocoon is uh, uh, produced by a single thread. Uh, so when we extract the uh, thread, it is reeled out as a single thread and then uh, they are joined with a uh, few more cocoons to make the, the thread that uh, forms the textile. Uh, while uh, species like Eri, they don't uh, produce the uh, fibers as a single thread, but they produce it as a mass. So it's almost like a kind of a cotton. So when you produce this Eri silkworm, it's, a, it's, a, it's like a cotton, which you can then uh, spun into thread, and then it can be taken also into uh, the textiles. Uh, so accordingly, the, the characteristics varies uh, and uh, I think consumers, they have different preference for different types of clothes and you always find uh, consumers for different uh, uh, quality of clothes that you come from. As a farmer, okay, there are challenges uh, that you face. Uh, for instance, uh, mulberry uh, is a perennial crop, but it requires very specific conditions. So you will have to maintain the mulberry plants without uh, disease and things. Uh, the insect by itself also has some uh, viral diseases, but what we try to do to support that is uh, we produce disease-free uh, eggs and we supply to farmers which, who are interested in uh, engaging in uh, bombix or airy silkworm production so that uh, they can produce disease-free uh, colonies of insects and get some good uh, fiber as well. Yeah. A free disease colony, uh, most of the diseases that uh, affects the uh, insect farming uh, or the sericulture farming uh, are transmitted from the mother to its offspring. So what we try to do is we get the parents, the male and the female moths, and they are allowed to mate in a single pairs, and uh, they lay eggs. So once the egg is laid, the parent which has laid the egg uh, after they are dead, they are also quickly checked for any diseases. And if there, if there are no diseases in the parent, then the egg that they have laid is all disease free. So you can actually try to give them off uh, to farmers. See, one of the biggest advantages that I see for climate change adaptation eh, is uh, the more the farmer diversifies his income uh, uh, opportunities, the less is he susceptible to climate variabilities. Uh, and in that space, like for instance, uh, airy silkworm, which is grown on, uh, on castor. Castor is a crop which grows in very dry conditions. And it, is, it doesn't lead a lot of uh, investments that you want to do. Uh, so, if you are able to rear an insect from this castor plant, so it automatically gives a farmer uh, a climate adaptation strategy that he can do. The next one is some of the perennial crops, unlike the uh, annual crops, are not very susceptible to uh, vagaries of climate. Uh, in that regard, mulberry and others are perennial crops which can ac actually sustain a bit of uh, climate variabilities. So clearly it's also an option that gives you uh, climate adaptation strategies for farmers. Moreover, uh, promoting the trees and castor also contributes to uh, building the ecosystem of the landscapes. Uh, 
uh, which has changed to largely annual crops, we are now coming up with a strategy where you can uh, diversify the production systems here. We do train farmers uh, both in Kenya and currently uh, uh, we also do a lot in, in Ethiopia uh, uh, with women. Uh, so we train them on the entire rearing procedures and also we have a uh, uh, demonstration on how the pupae can be transferred, uh, transformed into cloth. So we have the entire set of demonstration that uh, anyone who wants to get trained can come over and then get trained and uh, initiate their own business as well. Yeah. Okay. I think for silkworm production, uh, the future is good. Uh, the, it depends on how we choose the options for us. Uh. So we need to embrace the diversity that Africa has, especially in terms of fairy silk and uh, especially in terms of wild silk, and then try to also blend it with uh, Aryan Bombix Mori silk uh, to see how we can come up with unique uh, textile designs and patterns that suits our uh, uh, liking. So, there is a unique market for that. Dr. Tari, uh, can you tell me if this is the nice venture for the young people out there who would want to have something in their pockets? Yeah, definitely. This is a nice venture and it is not very uh, investment uh, heavy. So, definitely youths can engage into this thing. Okay. Zungumza kiswahili kidogo, habari yako? Uzur. Maybe you can tell me some two Swahili words you, you, you know? Uh, asante sana. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Umesikiliza kutoka kwa kia mesema asante sana. Kwangu pia ni sepeje. Mejaribu leo kuzungumza kingereza kidogo. Asante sana. Umesikiza, hameleza kwa undani kiabisa namna tunafuata utaratibu wa seri culture. Hapa tunalea uh, nondo hariri. Kwa kikisha kwa mba badaye, wewe kama mkulima unapata hela zako. Na namini kwa mba kama kijano umesikiliza anasema kuna hela hapa jitose katika ulingo huu ili badaye taifa la Kenya lipatelishe na we pia unufaike kifedha. Emmanuel Terer, Kenya's Gold. Wewe na ombese. Mwene ombe msama. Please say that in English. Akuna! Hey, umesema venture. Venture. Come on! Kine kigereza baide una... You did well. Excuse me, I'm going to tell you that I'm going to tell you that I'm going to tell you that I'm going to tell you that. Kwa sasa tunawana pia mikuchilika ngu wa kiswaili ni ngumu so we fit each other so well, right? Ndiyo. Goja usi. Umesema ni kuna nini kwa ulimi sasa? Eh, we ulirudi na blisters. But you did well. I'm so proud of you, Terry. Such a great explanation on how we get to find or get the silk fabric. And every single day right here on the show, we do tell you that agriculture is the foundation of all other industries. And we get to see a tangible proof of that every single day. Now, there's still a lot more to talk about when it comes to sericulture. And that is exactly what will be happening after this short commercial break that we are about to take. We we'll also want to find out what effects does it have to to our environment and more. So an expert will be joining us shortly, so don't go anywhere. If you do have any question or feedback in the meantime that you'd like to get through to us, talk to us across all our social media platforms on Instagram at Kenya's Gold. Our SMS line is 22422 and our email is kenyasgold.co.ke. See you after this short venture. <laughs>